Today I would like to show you how to use uh, D3JS library to be able to make uh, charts and uh, and also the SVG uh, so HTML uh, component. So let's get started. So basically uh, I have an index.html here and uh, all it has uh, right now is an SVG component which is an HTML5 component and I have put in a class of uh, chart for styling and it has a width and a height and uh, that's pretty much what it is and inside that I have uh, uh, something called a group in SVG and uh, what it does uh, what it helps with is that you can manipulate whatever is in the group together so all I'm doing inside the group here is uh, doing a transformation which basically translates it into uh, the X uh, position and the Y position and uh, so I'll get over that in a minute but let's see what the SVG component that is being used here. So here we have a rectangle which has a width of 19 and a height of 40. So you can see this is the rectangle which is uh, being drawn here. And you can see it's pretty easy to manipulate if I change it to 49. Here for example you can see the width uh, changes and the height changes. So that's what it does pretty straightforward. Uh, and then we have, uh, I have put in a text uh, attribute so to be able to see the text and you can see it's uh, setting up the position uh, of the text at uh, the midpoint of this uh, bar initially 19 divided by 2 is 9.5. The height I have set it up for 3 and this is the dy position and 3 is basically the position uh, from where uh, from the top it shows up. So if we uh, just try that, uh, you can see uh, that's what it is. Uh, and let me just go over the translate component, what it is. So let's say if I didn't do any translation, it would normally be just 0, 0. So if I do 0, 0, you can see that the bar is just pretty much at the top. And uh, the way the coordinate starts uh, for SVG, the position for the X is this way and the position for Y is this way and it is set up for 0. So typically in a bar chart, uh, we might want to start from the bottom where all the bar charts ori uh, bars originate from the bottom. So that's why I have that translate component. And the way it is set up here is uh, like 420 and the height is uh, 40. So 420 minus uh, 40 would be 380. That's what I did. And uh, you can see now the bar is going to be at the bottom. So if you just had one bar, that's all uh, you need to do. Uh, if you wanted to create more bars, uh, you could just essentially similarly uh, do this transformation. And here I'm showing you that several bars have been created. Uh, typically, uh, you could just basically use SVG to do this, but uh, normally you would not be doing this uh, because it would be very tedious and you don't want to have all your data and everything included in the HTML file. So let's just get started and I'm going to uh, uh, comment all of this out. So all I have is an SVG component here in HTML. Uh, uh, to be able to use the D3JS library, I'm going to enable the D3JS library. And, uh, and I'm going to have a little bit of JavaScript code and I'll show you how the D3 uh, library is used. So that's uh, where I am. And uh, let me just kind of show you as to uh, what, how you write the D3 code. So this is the data uh, that uh, I'm setting it up. Basically the height of the bars, various bars is just this value, which is uh, 4, 8, 15, so on. And uh, the X position is uh, the names of the various bars is uh, listed as name. So that's pretty basic and you can set it up as a JavaScript uh, data. Uh, this is uh, just the width of the canvas, the height of the canvas, the bar width is basically width divided by the amount of data length. So that's what I did. Uh, so th the way you write uh, the D3 uh, code is you say D3, then I'm saying select chart, which I already had as an SVG element. And I'm attaching the attributes width and height. And the way these attributes are attached, it's pretty similar to attaching uh, jQuery CSS, but not quite the same, but quite similar. So it should come naturally for people who have used jQuery before. So that's uh, all this is. Uh, the second line here is I'm declaring a, a variable uh, y for the scaling on the y-axis. 
And um, uh, the way you declare the scale is say d3 scale is linear. So that scale is linear. And then uh, I can say the range of this is uh, from the height to zero because uh, we have position, we are going to start it from the bottom. That's why it's written as uh, height comma zero. And the domain is the data. So the uh, data, uh, what does the data vary from? Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. It says zero and you take the d3 dot max is the helper function. And it takes uh, the data, which is our uh, data that is being supplied. And uh, we're basically sending it to a function which returns the d dot value. So that's what this is doing. So just to recap, this is the range, uh, total range. And this is the particular position uh, scaling that is returned when you this function gets called for various data points. Similarly, you can do it for the uh, x-axis where I still put in a linear scale and the range is just in this case 0 to width. So quite straightforward. So uh, in terms of how you specify things in D3, uh, you uh, select this chart, the canvas, and you say you are selecting all of the group elements, uh, for example, here. And this is where you bind the data, and this is the binding of the data uh, that we have at the top. So data is being bound here. And um, so there is a, a, a concept called enter, uh, which is uh, quite important in the way it is uh, specified in D3. And it basically what it means is um, you look at all, uh, all of the G elements that like, already exist. Right now, we don't have any G element. So it's going to append the G element for all of the data that is uh, existing. So we have, say, uh, six or seven data points. So it's going to attend, uh, append a G element for all of those data points. So remember, uh, 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 for all of the, if we were to draw this by hand, we had to do this transformation where you say translate, and this is the position and uh, where the bars are going to be. And this is uh, what is being done uh, in this code. For each of the D, uh, G elements, I'm going to do a translation. And uh, here it is the I times the bar width, which is the position, and zero. So that's what this translation is. Then we do need to append the rectangle elements because uh, that's what you have here. See inside here, you have a rectangle uh, of the width and all that. So this is uh, where the rectangle elements are being attached. It's the Y position, the height and the width and then uh, to do the text uh, which is uh, was this one uh, this is the code which can do the text so this is uh, the way you are going to do the text is bar width over height over two the y value is going to be plus three this is the height of the font and the text is basically the value which is being uh, returned so that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, let me just skip over this uh, access stuff and I can get over that later. So if I just had that particular code, now you can see this bar charts are being uh, pretty much data driven and which is very nice. So that's how typically you would uh, use the D3JS library uh, to be able to do this thing. So one more quick thing, let me uh, show you if this data is uh, coming as uh, something else like from a file or something, how would you do that? So there are some uh, uh, helper functions uh, available in D3 uh, that uh, can get this data from a file on the server. And uh, to show that, I'm going to comment out this uh, data. And uh, typically what you do is uh, you say d3.json. This is the format. Uh, this is where the location of the file is. So it's just essentially doing an AJAX request. And the function will essentially have an error code and the data. Data is uh, exactly this, uh, this uh, data. And if I show you the JSON file, it is basically an array of objects, same thing, uh, with a name and a value attributes. So if, if I do that, then I, uh, uh, so this should uh, basically pull the code uh, from the JSON file, and you should be able to uh, see it. And so you can uh, make this uh, pretty much this is how you would uh, go about creating any bar charts or anything else uh, using T3. Uh, one other thing I can show you uh, just to do the access. Uh, basically for access, uh, you have a method d3.svg.access. 
uh, you apply to it the scale which was uh, right over here in the linear scale in this case you apply the scale i'm orienting it to the right so once the scale axis has been done you have to append the axis to your chart so this the way you append it is similar which we have seen you take the chart append a g element i'm setting up an attribute and then the way to call the axis is call and the y axis it will call the axis and so let's see if you, what it does and so here you can see it is uh, created an axis on the bar chart hopefully this is uh, useful and uh, it will make it easier for you to get started with d3.js if you want to learn about this or any other functions you can uh, also go to my website uh, gaur associates and you can uh, go to javascript or html5 and uh, learn more about these technologies uh, thank you for your time